Another day, another Chevrolet, and a junk Toyota. This will get the Chevy guys going, right? And that's what we do, we get Chevy guys going. We got a Toyota here. And it is broke. 188,000 mile piece of poo. Engine light, traction light, four low light flashing, wow. out folks has a bad right rear wheel bearing I looked at it the other day for the fella the bearings coming undone and it broke the speed sensor it makes lots of noises when you drive it so we need to put a back wheel bearing in this thing a right rear wheel bearing rather and a speed sensor oh they're going the right way step one remove the wheels actually step one spend 45 minutes Digging through people's trash to find the wheel lock. So that's always a fun thing to do. It really sets the mood for the whole job. A little free tip Friday for you folks. If you're taking your truck to the shop or your car and you got an effing wheel lock, put it in the cup holder. That's your free tip for the day. All right, rant's over. Uh, but ask any mechanic, they will agree with me. <laughs> Trust me, it's frustrating. Let's uh, get the caliper and bracket assembly off. Looks like maybe a 17 mm. We'll go get some tools for that. We'll peel the bracket off. I believe it's been a been a New York minute since I've done one of them. That means it hasn't been very long. It's been a long time. It's been like a North Dakota minute. Time stands still up there, I'm sure. We have to unhook the brake line, don't we? Yes, because the whole backing plate comes off. So we need to unhook the brake line anyways. So let's pinch off the rear brake hose so we don't lose all of our fluid. We'll unhook the brake line and then take the whole caliper and hose off as an assembly. So this has independent brake hoses on the rear because it has traction control. Or Toyota's version of their limited slip, <laughs> which is a joke. So we're gonna pinch off the one hose. Now keep it from peeing over here. All right, see if we can't crack our brake line loose. Guess we ought to use the flare nut side of it, or the flare wrench, eh? All right, there we go. Crack that baby loose. Not too often you can do that on a 2012 New York truck. I believe this truck's been crowned or fluid filmed a few times in the past. Not consistently every year with this fella, but at some point in the past, it has been a couple times at least, which has preserved it. All right. Take that off all the way. Yeah, it is a 17. See if our Ugga Dugga gun has enough strength. Not quite enough. Lead in its pencil today. Let's try this bottom one. Nope. Let me uh, get a ratchet here, folks. See if we have enough lead in our pencil. Mother of pearl! And they're pretty tight. I'll get the bottom one. It's just like the top one. It's just down here on the bottom where you can't see. There we go. Now we got those cracked loose. Now we'll come in with the Ugga Dugga and the swiveler. That'll save us all that wrenching. Oh, did I get you? Pop, pop, get you. All right. So those two bolts are off. This is what they look like, in case you're in the bolts and you want to look at them. We got a screwdriver. What do we got here? We got a pair of pliers. We can wiggle our caliper up off there. Run what you brung, that's what we're doing. All right. <laughs> See if we can't... Uh, Probably the piston back here a little bit, so it'll go on a little easier. There it is there, okay, let's set that to the side. And now we can finish taking off our brake line nut there. But we will also get the brake line clip off, which is that little fella right there, okay? Drop it directly onto the floor. 
and finish unhooking our hose. It'd be nice if this was slotted, which if you don't want to screw on, just take your cutoff wheel and just notch this because then you can pull it ahead a little bit and then just stick your line through it, if you know what I'm saying? So we'll finish unhooking that. We'll set the whole caliper aside. We'll go hang it somewhere off the hose. That's what we'll do. Never mind. We're gonna have to go get a screwdriver, I suppose. And back off our parking brake shoes. Just a whisper. We'll find the adjuster here. Hiding in here somewhere. That's the actuator, so it's gonna be opposite of that. Way down yonder. Think about what way you want to turn it, then turn it the opposite way. Oh, you son of a hoo-hoo. Yep, should have turned it the opposite. Should have took my own advice. You'll get it right 50% of the time, every time. Ah, oh, baby is born, there we go. I think the deed needs to be done either now or later, so we'll just get the deed done now. The parking brake shoes, I believe, have to come off. So we'll take some of these parts off. We've got your classic lower spring. You've got your classic brake adjuster right there. We've got some hold down parts here. We'll push them in, give them a little turn. Watch out, because she's going to go flinging. Your classic brake spring cup. Your classic brake spring. Hold down spring. And then the nail. Right there. Okay. And then we'll uh, unhook this upper spring. If we can. We got Almost had it. Almost had you. We got you now. There she is. You got your rear shoe and your front shoe. Let's open these up a little bit. Give that a little twirler. Give that the old twirly gig. Gotta hold that nail still, fella. Come on, baby. Oh, it's playing hard to get. Because it wants to shoot right out of there. Pew! Dang it, we did almost that whole job without dropping anything. But here we are, there's the other shoe. Let's find our spring that just dropped. Right there by your foot. Wow, watch, almost got me. And then you got your classic park and brake actuator. Hooks into there. Now typically all this stuff is seized up. Are you leaving me? Well, are you? You leaving? It's not. It's nine o'clock in the morning. You can't quit yet. I got something to do. All right, we love you. Bye. Watch out for the ice out there. I know. Oh, she'll be back. She always comes back. Where were we? Uh, let's see. Park and brake stuff. We need to unhook the speed sensor, and hopefully. If we're living right, the parking brake cable, I forgot about that. I should, probably should have ordered that. These Toyotas, junk, freaking junk. Uh, they use aluminum right here, and it usually uh, mixes with a little salt and then has a little galvanic corrosion, and it turns into a white little pus sack back here. But this one still looks halfway decent. <laughs> Typically, when I'm doing these old piece of crap Toyotas, Usually the backing plates are rusted off and the parking brake cable is like about that big around and weight and pussy But this one I think is gonna survive hashtag survivor Where's the other clippy you had should be around here somewhere I just like calling them junk because it gets people pumped up Right, Mrs. O? Oh, yeah. You uh, 
pumped up. <laughs> all right, let's get Mrs. all pumped up. She gets all pumped up about it. <laughs> I just like doing it because it pisses people off and it's really fun to do. Because you know there's some Chevy guy out there going, oh yeah, yeah, here it goes, the Toyota's are junk. <laughs> You know, I joined the 422 man. <laughs> I don't care what you think, folks. They're all junk. Yeah, I took this out the other day to have a little gander at it. That's why that came out so easy, but the end of it is all chewed up there. She went full chowder on it. That's why our lights are on. So let's take the bolts out of this. Why I came right out. That never happens. Drop that right straight on the floor. At least we're doing good. I should just put a catch pan on the floor put all of our bolts in. Isn't there another bolt on that? I thought there was. Nope. Look at me, I don't know anything. What, you pumped? You want to even talk to us now? Are you pumped? I'm not pumped. When do I get pumped? I don't know, you gonna slam all your doors? I wasn't, I don't slam my doors. I know, but you want me to? No, I told uh, you, even if you're pumped, to please don't slam my doors. <laughs> that's one That's one thing I ask of you. What if I slam your doors? I get pumped when I can't find a stupid wheel ox. Gosh, that pisses me off. Oh of all things in the world. It was in the glove box. It's not even like it was hidden or that I, you had to wait a long time for it. But the truck is already on the lift. I forgot I had wheel ox. You get up on the lift, but I can't open the freaking door. And then you gotta go dig through all their stuff. Maybe you should be a free tinker there, Mr. Mechanic. Vanessa? Are you getting pumped? No, I'm not pumped. We just gotta get all four of these nuts off. These nuts. There's one more on the other side. I think that's it. Once this up, we'll go get a pan because we're probably gonna lose a little fluid here. It stinks. It smells like burned up bearing over here. Hopefully there's no axle damage or anything, but she's pretty noisy. This one here, the shock's too close. You gotta give this one a handy. There we go. Let's go get a bucket before we pull this back. There it is, boys. There's an O-ring I forgot to buy. So that's good. Here's some of the sludge. So that's good. Oh, she got that stinky leg. Woo! Like I say, it's been a minute or two since I've done one of these, so I've got to kind of take a refresher course here. All right, we have a snap ring, but then I thought we have this, uh, should be a lock ring here too. Press on style. I can't remember. Yeah, she's pretty wide. And I'm pretty sure the one we got from Napper is not as wide. Oh boy. Well, I'll tell you what, let's uh, de-glove ourselves. Not in a literal sense, because an actual finger de-gloving is not fun. Okay, it is pretty wide. Okay, I thought it was a little thinner, because this is where the sealing surface of the inner seal rides on this. And this is also our bearing retainer. <clears throat> okay, once we push that on, presses on, holds the bearing on, but we need to remove the snap ring first, which is already loose, which is great. Let's make sure the outside diameter of this is good. Yeah, and that fits in our seal just lovely. We'll get our German made Nipex. Come on, baby. There we go, we'll get her up here. Up and out, we'll take that snap ring off, okay? We'll save that. I can't remember if I can press these off with the, uh, with the sleeve or not. Typically, typically. <laughs> so that's how bad that bearing is, really bad. Typically, you'll, psh, you'll slip them a little, kind of relieve the tension, if you will, which I think we might do. Hey, you want come out here for a minute? It stinks. Oh, that's what I was trying to trick it you with. It stinks in there. Isn't it great? That's why I was looking, because I didn't know you had to pull I was explaining to the people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. that the best? No. 
Torch chip needs a little attention. We provided that thing with relief. More than you get from tough acting to nactin. I don't even know what tough acting to nactin does, but you kind of go across it, massage it in this fashion instead of straight down like you'd think. You got more control. You can see when you're burning through the outer metal into the inner, and you just kind of wave across it. Now that should come off nice and easy. We could have left to get in here probably with a air chisel or something, but we'll just leave it how it is because now we know for a fact that it'll come right off without an issue. Where's our pumper? Here it is. Now it's going to have some pressure because it's still in the bearing, but not much. And keep your tootsies out of the way because it'll get your foot. It's going to get to a point where it just cuts loose. And that's it folks, you're all done. Let's take this little guy back off there and see what we have. Here's our retaining ring. So that's how we shaved her down a little bit. Just went through a whisper. Set that to the side. Here's one part of our bearing. Here's the other part of our bearing. So she's kind of a mess in there. Set that down on the floor here. Cause we've got a little bit of a problem now. The other part of the bearing is stuck. That's okay, we got a little Vic out here. So there's our magnetic tone ring. Oh, you guys can't see right there. All right. Okay. That's junk. So now we need to take old Vic and give her some of that. There's nothing else out here to damage. I do declare. So let's take Vic and just kind of give this thing a nick. A 
and you can see for all you torch haters out there that we never cut the axle. We'll shine that baby up. Spin her all the way around for you. Just to let you know, no axles were harmed in the making of this video. And same thing with that bearing race. We'll just uh, give it some gentle massages on the side here. Get it relieved and then we'll knock it up off there. you need to quit and I was I was starting to creep up on that point she was getting pretty toasty so let's get her knocked out of there now to set her down here folks <laughs> never mind Now we're up to that snap ring portion. So. There, the race is off. We're gonna let this cool down naturally here. I'm gonna show you that we did not cut the axle because we need to go throw it in a parts washer and clean the grease and junk out that's down in here. This is an oil slinger, so when, if the inner seal were to leak or bearings start puking, you know, all the oil comes in here, hits the slinger, and it'll sling out on the front of your rim. So that way there is a driver you know. Something ain't right. Yeah, I can't remember how hard these come out. We're gonna try just right here on our cart. Now let's get a little taller socket. Let's, um, let's just try one. I, if I remember right, they, I don't think they come out that hard, but we're gonna give her a little tap. Yeah, so they don't, they don't come out very hard. So we'll get these all tapped loose. Right, because they, they've got to come out. Yeah, because we've got to get the bearing. Because, the, yeah, these are knurled just into the edge of the bearing. See that shiny spot on it? So if you just try beating the bearing off, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because they go into the backing plate. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. Just believe in yourself, man. Believe in yourself. We'll just keep doing it like we were doing it here. That seemed to work okay. Fake it till you make it, that's what I always say. Got me this far in life, I guess. Now this one, I can't back up with the socket I have, so we're just gonna try it without a socket. Who needs a socket? they're just barely into the bearing itself sometimes you get lucky better back this one up then we should be able to knock this bearing right out of the backing plate in theory And let's see, they are only a one-way job. There is a left and a right on these Yodas, and it's gonna be the difference of the orientation of the speed sensor. So keep that in mind. Probably should have checked to see if we had the right one, but 
it's too late now, dude. You can see the rust build up under the backing plate causes these big pimples. Yeah, we can take it out on the bench. We'll take it out on the bench, we'll tap them down a little bit, but then we'll get all this stuff cleaned up. Get her oriented right here, we'll slip our new bearing. Right up yonder. Stick these little guys in there. We'll get them just started. Just so. That didn't really work out for you, did it? The people saw it. So then we can flip her over. We'll stick these on. We should be able to pull them in. It's gonna put a little swirly mark on this, but just settle down. It's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt anything. No one will ever see it. Even if he takes it to a car show, they won't see it. Not quite. That one's good. That one's good. Oh, we need some pliers. We just gotta hold just enough to get some tension on it. They don't, they don't pull through very far. You guys remember the knurling didn't go very far at all. That one's started. We just want a little tension on it. We'll give them a little whack from the back. All right. Goody goody. We'll get our bigger socket. We'll just give each of those a little tap. Hey dude. Those are a popular shoe nowadays, right? Everybody got the hey dudes. Nope. Oh, probably need a bigger sock. I tell you what. Let's just keep drawing them in. They only got just a whisper to go. Give these two a little tap over here. We can even tap them once they're on, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, you got everything's way out of frame here. Sorry. I guess that's it. I'll wipe that stuff off. We had a rag here. We'll push the uh, axle back in. I don't think we're doing real good in the videography department here today, but I think you guys are getting the gist of this. The gist of it is if you're doing one, just take this thing off, take it to a shop and have them press it in and press it out for you. But before you go, make sure they have the tool to do Toyotas and Nissans. Otherwise, they can't do it. Or if they can, it'll be extremely difficult. Stick that up there. See where I heated up the oil slinger? Just didn't want to hide that from you guys. Oh yeah, somebody's gonna see it. Look, you suck. Told you you hit it. I did let this cool down all the way on natural. We've stuck her in the parts washer, so we should be good. We're gonna slide the backing plate down on there. And then your ring. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. All right, let's go stick her in the press. Hopefully our press blocks fit between here. Oh, she's gonna be snug. We might have to knock out a dowel or a uh, bolt. 
Well, if they fit, it's gonna be close. So I did have to take one stud out to get the press block set up to hold it underneath the retaining ring. Now the axle's gonna come down. I got them pushed in all the way. The axle's gonna come down and kind of spread these out once it starts pressing through. So we just gotta kind of watch. Everything's going together, right? Right? We're not doing this wrong. Yeah, everything's cool. It's not going to taper out until the very end. No, we should be good, right? Yeah, no, because we're at the width of the axle right there on the edge of the... Yeah, we'll be good. No, let me back it off. Something's not right. It's getting tight, I think, because we're coming out on the fatter part of the axle. It might be pushing against those studs. Yeah, this side's loose, yeah. We're gonna have to knock one more of those studs out because it's just putting tension on it where it's gonna lock my block in here. I don't know if it would get stuck, you know, permanently or destroy these studs. I don't have a wrench with me. easy enough we're just we're gonna err on the side of caution and just take that out like I say we're coming through the axle starting to taper a little bit here and it's gonna want to push our blocks out and hit that so we've got to be a little bit cautious here. I think these blocks are slightly different. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about it catching. We're just using this to take up space. Kind of like me in high school. Oh, hey dude. It's taking up space. Let's just put a little pressure on it. Let's see. Um, this one looks a little crooked. Let me just take it off a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, so you don't want to wobble sideways on us here. We're going to stick these in here because I don't know if they'll fit when we're done. I like to think that they would, but... Nobody wants to find out that they don't. Oops. Idiot. Come on. I just wanted to wiggle it a little as it goes into the seal. Okay, we're fully in the seal. Oh, whoa, hehehe, <laughs> fella did bottom out. We should, we should be in the snap ring, so we shouldn't really have to push any harder. Give it a look. Yes, sir, I can see a full groove. We'll take that out, and then uh, we'll go put our two studs back in. And we should be good. We want to get this cleaned up a little bit. So we're just going to plug off the hole here. walking back there. Oh uh, yeah? Yep. Yeah. You're not gonna say anything? She don't like the smell out here. <laughs> Make sure you get a new o-ring. Stick your new o-ring up there and or reuse your old one. We're gonna spritz this with a little fluid film. Just keep her from getting too rusted up and just put it back together. There she's spritzed. Come at it like 
this. You have to pull your way around in there, pick her up a little bit. Just line up your studs. Bob's your uncle. Put these back on. We'll get these torque to factory specs. We'll give them just a little extra love just because we beat them in there. We want to make sure they're in all the way. So that's good. We've got our new speed sensor here. Your 53 2248. Classic right from Napper. Expensive, man. These things are spending. Even if you buy them from Toyota, these sensors are stupid money. We're gonna go like that. She's already got some grease on the O ring right out of the box. So we're gonna stick that right there for a second. Use that to plug the hole. Spritz her down a little fluid film underneath it. Keep it from rust jacking, even though it's not really much of an issue on these trucks. We'll stick the stud and nut back in there. The whole thing came out. So we'll do that and find our 10 mil, which is right here. Give that snug. Oh, we gotta put our connector back together. Where'd we do with that? Oh, great. Oh, here it is. These are a little bit of a maze. Not terrible. Put your wire in there. It's got like an anti-strain catch on it there, so you wind her around town. Click her back together, but you gotta pop it apart to, to unhook it, right? So there's that. What we got? We got this little fella right here. Slip it in. Boom. Should be a bolt for that somewhere. Is he left somewhere, Spaw? I found it. It was on the floor. It must have fallen on the floor when we took it out. We'll give that a little snug up. There that is. Step two, or I guess we're probably on three or four at this point. Figure out how all this crap goes back together. Let's see here. That's only gonna go one way. Theoretically. We're gonna come down and hook it back onto our cable. Just like so. The engineering differences between Toyota and domestic automakers is night and day. You try to do this on a Chrysler or a Ford or a GM, there's no provision for it to hold itself, we'll say. I'm not trying to sound unpatriotic or un-American. I'm as American as apple pie, baseball, and Chevrolet. All I'm saying is I can appreciate good engineering when I see it. Even if it is on a Chevy, or a Ford, or a Dodge, or any maker model for that matter. When something's pretty neat, it's pretty neat. It's not neat that I'm, you guys are standing where I need to stand. So let's, uh, let's switch spots here, fella. Let's see if we can't accomplish this with our tools at hand. I do have a tool that puts these on, which for some reason I'm neglecting to walk the 10 pieces to go get it. Because I'm hanging on to a pair of pliers. Let's just see my favorite pair of pliers. Speaking of good engineering, the guy who made these things, he deserves a raise. I'm gonna have to go get my tool. <laughs> no, we're not, we're gonna do it. We're gonna get this job done with what we have. This is like if we're out in the middle of the Amazon. All we had is a pair of pliers. I think I'd leave the park and break shoes off if I was in the middle of the Amazon. Why would we have this apart anyways? All right, let's go get the tool. Let's see, there we go. Come on through, little nail. There you go. I would tend to think that the Chevy guys can look at something like this and appreciate good engineering too. Or just how insanely overbuilt Toyotas are. For a half ton truck, I mean, crown out loud, it's got a front load and third member rear end. And I think the ring gear is over a 10 inch ring gear, so it'd be pretty equivalent to a one-ton Chevy. 
ring gear wise, they, what are they running? A 10 and a half and an 11 and a half? I think the, these are bigger than 10. These are monsters rear end. The non adjuster side faced forward. So we'll slip that baby in there. Just like so, and we'll slip our bottom spring on. Oh, keyboard's gonna catch on fire down there, fellas. Slow down. Okay, there we go. We're good. Got to make sure we're up in the groove all the way. All right, let's wipe our greasy paw prints off and we'll be good to go. There you go, it is almost Christmas, so. I'll leave you guys hanging. things rust here so the outside of that rotor is already rusty and so it's been what a couple hours since we pulled this thing inside in that wild so it's called flash rust it's a very very common thing in the northeast uh, right now it's very salty outside <laughs> you can imagine that and when you pull your car in a garage and park it your brake rotors instantly rust just from the you know the salt in the air at least here on the outside a lot of the rust on the inside too but I'm just showing you the outside. Super common thing. So the complaint you'll get, people will call your shop and be like, my brakes are grinding. But then it goes away after like three stops. So it's flash rust. Even just so much as going into the grocery store, you go in, you get your groceries, come out your first couple, two or three stops. <sighs> Sounds like metal against metal. Toss your caliper back up on there. We'll stick our brake hose in here. Before you put the clip in it, get your brake nut started in the line and then line her up. It's a lot easier to do it like that. And then we'll stick our clip back on there. I'll try to do it in a fashion which you can't see anything. Get the hammer. Hammer your clip back on. Find your 10 mil wrench. Put your brake line nut back in there. We'll let some of the stink out from this well. So, what's all the pickering going on in here? Oh, you're hanging up your license plates, huh? Yep, got the rest of the state. Got every single state now, don't you? Mm -hmm. And some provinces and some places in Europe and even from Australia. All over the place. Why, Luna? Do you want to go outside? It's very cold out. Bye. Oh yeah, bad idea, wasn't it, Kat? Huh? Now she's just gonna sit there for the next 10 minutes and come back in. She went out like 20 minutes ago for about a minute and then came back in. Well, it's starting to get a tidbit chilly out there. It's yeah. supposed to be minus 30 today, they say, Miss Zill. Can you believe uh, that? Is it actually minus 30? Nope, feel? minus 30 wind chill. It's supposed to be five with a minus 30 wind chill because the wind's cranking. Coming out of south right now, all the flags tingled up. Anyways, uh, we need you, old girl. Me? Yes, ma'am. Need a brake bleeder. Oh, boy. Please. Mm -hmm. I opened the door out there for you. So it's not... Get rid of that stinky stink. Ready to throw up when I yes, walk out there? Yes, correct. It's going to be cold. You got to help us? Oh, yeah. Huh? You got to let it down. So. Luna. Kitty, 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 kitty. Why don't you come back inside, man? Are you in willing? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and give it half pumps, only halfway to the floor. Is that the only pump that you 
Yeah, but only go about halfway for me. It should start stiffening up on you. It is? Okay, you ready to hold down? Okay, let up. Down. Up. Down. It's like a good little pump of air here, I would think. Up. Down. No, there's a little bit right at the end. Up. Down. Up. Down. Alright, I guess we're good. Is that good, old girl? Does it feel good? Yeah. Feels like it should. Put the cap back on that. Put the plug back in the front of your rotor after you adjust your parking brake. If you choose to do so. I guess that's it. Throw a tire on it and ship it. I imagine we're gonna have to clear the coats out of it, so I got our dongle with us. Just gotta find out where it goes here. Ah, I feel it. I just gotta flip it around five or six times. Ooh, first try. <laughs> Let's uh, open up our door. We'll go outside. Yeah, we've still got all kinds of flashing lights, all that stuff. I'll let her start getting hooked up here. There it goes, it just got hooked up, I heard it beep. Oh, it's getting nasty out. We gotta go on a cat rescue mission. Oh, Luna, you poor baby. Oh, come here. Come here. Yeah, I told you not to go outside. You're wet now. You changed your mind. Yeah. Oh, are you making cupcakes? Maybe. Ooh. Cat always does that. She goes outside for about a minute. So I'd say that was a bad idea. Okay, let's get hooked up. Clear it out. Got her data. Let's ride. Toyota's had seatbelt dingers. I turned all that off in my truck. That's the beauty of Toyota. You can just go in the menu and just turn it all off. Looks like it's working beautifully. No lights. That's good. That's it folks, we're back. Everything's good, all the lights are out, and everybody works, and everybody's happy. Hope you guys are happy. I'm happy, because this is my last car I had to work on. It's my only car I scheduled for today, because I want to go home early. And when you're the boss, you get to do things like that, I suppose. We're taking a week off. So, it probably won't be any videos for a while. Probably going to burn up my queue of videos, which isn't that many. Anyhow. Changing a bearing on a Toyota Tundra, not too bad of a job, providing you have the tool to pull them apart. Can it be done without it? Absolutely, I've done them, it's a bear. First one I did, I said, wow, this is the bear. Something like that, a little bit more vulgar. And then I said, you know what, you're gonna buy that tool, you son of a gun. And then I did, and I'm happy I did. You don't use it a lot, you don't need to buy the actual Toyota or Kentmore or whoever makes it for Toyota, you can just buy a cheap knockoff one off the Amazon like I did. And then that's gonna cover you for a multitude of different vehicles, uh, different imports. I think mostly Nissan and Toyota it covers, uh, you know, with this style rear differential, but it's a great tool to have. And then plus you get the, you know, Joe Schmoes off the street or uh, other shops typically that bring you, you know, the assembly and you press apart, press it back together. So the tool pays for itself eventually, but whatever. Otherwise you've got to pull it or you get to lose this job and you have to send it off to another shop or to the Toyota dealer. And you know how the dealers are, they're just gonna screw you. I'm just kidding, they don't but people think they do. 
they might i don't know i've never gone to another shop but i'm done talking why don't you guys go into that comment section questions comments concerns to insty the facebook put some toyota hate down there and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it thanks for watching